Hello, my name is Eric Barthelemy. I am a scientist at EFSA. I specialize in food contact material, which is what I'm going to talk about today. First of all, what do we mean by food contact materials? Well, food contact materials are all types of materials that come into contact with food. This means food packaging and food containers such as bottles, cans, and carton. Cutlery and dishes like knives, forks, curbs and plates are food contact material too. It also includes materials used in kitchen equipment such as coffee maker, kettles, and blenders. Other types are production machinery and containers used in food transport. Many different materials can be used in these articles. They are often made from plastic, but also from glass in yarn and bottles, in metal in cans, in ceramics, silicone, carbon, wood, inks, etc. Often a combination of material is used. For example, a fruit juice carton might include layer of plastic, aluminum, paper, and inks. What does this have to do with food safety? All these food contact materials have important function. Food packaging protects food from microorganisms and makes it easier to store and to prolong the shelf life of food. Packaging and other articles such as containers also improve hygiene and make it more convenient for people to buy, sell, and handle food. Even so, when these materials make contact with food, some chemical substance contained in them might be transferred into the food. This is called migration. Since consumers can then be exposed to these chemicals, European law requires that any potential migration into foods does not raise safety concerns or change the food in an unacceptable way. For example, the taste and smell. How do scientists evaluate the risk posed by these materials? When risk assessors like EFSA evaluate the safety of substances used to manufacture food contact materials, we take the same approach as with other chemicals. We assess the potential toxicity and consumer exposure to substances. Also, in the case of food contact materials, the rate of migration of substances from materials into food is a critical factor. This is influenced by the substance itself, the type of material, the type of food, and the condition of contact, such as the temperature and the duration. For example, migration into dry food is more limited than in most food or liquids. If the substance does not migrate into food, the consumer is not at risk. If it does migrate, the safety evaluation must ensure that consumer exposure will not trigger any adverse health effect. That's why scientists also determine the level at which substances can migrate into food without putting a risk to the consumer. Once scientists have assessed the level of risk, it is then up to regulators to decide whether they should be authorized for using the food chain. 